Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Got this replay off of lotv.spawningtool.com, a great place to be to look for build orders and replays, and they feature my cast on the front page quite often, so support them. And let's get right on into it here on Acid Plant. Top left hand corner, the red Protoss player, DNS, the French Protoss player from Cascade Gaming. And in the bottom right hand corner, the very young, the very young blue Terran player, it is Clem, also from France, and playing for Exceed. Now, this is interesting. I'm not sure exactly why these guys played. I wonder if it was just a random ladder game that somebody uploaded to Spawning Tool because I couldn't figure out if it was part of any particular tournament. It doesn't seem like it was. And it's just fun to see players uh, from from the same country playing against each other. I like to see Neeb play Puck for that reason. I mean, obviously the Koreans versus the Koreans are a lot of fun, but uh, it's just when, well, I don't know, for example, Showtime versus uh, TLO would be another fun one there. But it's France versus France here, and we have a forward pylon from DNS throwing up a gateway there, another gateway at home, and one gas at home. Now... Is Clem scouting? The answer is no! He's not scouting with anything at all. He doesn't expect this kind of aggression out of DNS. He's not playing against Haz. Obviously not. And we'll see how this works out. <laughs> oh! OGTV was casting this. Alright, so it definitely feels like part of some kind of a tournament. Some kind of a big deal. I don't know exactly what it is, though. The spawning tool link does not indicate what it is at all, somehow. Hmm. Anyway, lots of PBT recently. Right? Lots of PVT. Those players who really watch like watching PVT have got to be just pleased as punch. I really don't generally have any kind of planned out pattern for what I'm going to do more than anything else. It's just what games catch my eye and it happened to be this one today. This is Dennis the Donut Boy. Dennis was originally a lowly donut boy on board the McGovern when he somehow got hold of the crew's confidential files. Through the use of bribes and blackmail, he was able to become captain of an old mining ship. However, at some point, his ruse was discovered, and he was put into the Reaper program for his potentially treasonous actions. Is that a reference to something? I'm really confused. Feels like it maybe is from a movie or a cartoon. Anyway, Dennis the Donut Boy is here. He, he's tr potentially treasonous. Anyway, it's going to be a stalker here at this forward gateway. Another pylon over here for DNS. And the Reaper's not even scouting. Why are you going base home? Oh, well, a stalker showed up. Goodbye, natural base. First of all, that's a straight-up cancel. Does he have any Marines at all? He has some Marines. He's trying to kill the Marines without... Oh, he picked that one off. That was fantastic. Reaper coming in to help with that. Kitty 8 charge. Whee! Getting that 10 damage in. And now the stalker's going to die, but he does take some Marines with him. A zealot shows up. And that, at the very least, is going to be very hard for the Reaper to deal with. Oh, the wall! The wall is down! The Zealot is in! Stalker! Oh, the bunker comes up, though. The bunker comes up from Clem. Some exceptionally good aggression here out of DNS. Zealot. Does he get any kills before he dies? Yes, he does! He kills an SCV. Well played, my good friend. Dennis the Donut Boy has one kill to his name. Did he actually get a kill on a Stalker? What a boss! Not many not many Reapers get kills on Stalkers, y'all. That's a Stargate follow-up, too. So, you're worried about this gateway pressure at the front, and then suddenly an Oracle shows up and just wrecks your day, I believe is what we're going to see here. Uh, Reaper running around. Oh, that Stalker. Dennis, you poor thing. One more shot. No, oh, an extra shot. One HP remaining. I thought for sure one more shot and Dennis was dead. Dennis lives, friends. Hashtag Dennis lives. Stalker is trying to do stuff. There's a Cyclone out now for Clem, which is a brilliant decision. Rebuilding a natural base inside his main. Going for a Starport and an expansion coming up for DNS to Peggett. There's someone whose name is Baguette. Who's probably refereeing this game, which is hilarious. Yep, it's an Oracle. Oracle's name is a baby. A Protoss researcher wanted to craft a new Oracle AI that would spread the most terror possible among Terrans. The researcher discovered that babies leave Terrans sleepless and in stress. So kidnapped one and turned it into an oracle with science. It spent the first few months dumping stasis wards everywhere, attempting to blast everything and crying for seemingly no reason. And getting SCV kills too! Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Cyclone Marine though, actually able to shove a baby away. Wait, a baby away here. Did end up getting several kills though, another oracle on the way. I am loving this from DNS. Holy crap. Is he going to go mass oracle? Wait, where are you going home? What are you... There's nothing causing problems, right? No, but there's a raven in production. There's a... 
Wow. Why are the oracles going home? What are you worried about? Your natural base is safer than safe. Man, DNS misread something there. He thought there was something going on that wasn't. Tanks in production from Clem. Raven's here too. I really feel like Clem could get out of this. If he just wins this engagement, gets his natural base landed, I think he's going to be okay. I really do. Land it. Just land it. There we go. Now the tank's going to set up in siege mode, and now the stalkers can't get close enough to hit it. And Good job by Clem. Okay, so it's 35 to 29 harvesters. Six SCDs have died. Some of them through harassment, others, well, all of them through harassment, obviously. Uh, but can the stalkers actually get back here? <laughs> they can actually get back here. Look at them just outside of that range. Let's move, push up a little bit, tank. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. There we go. Circles up and bam. Big time shots there. One cyclone down, two cyclones down. It's time to get out. Cyclones, Stalkers, Stalkers actually down. And suddenly we have Oracle attacks with double Phoenix here, but there is a missile turret, which is a huge play from Clem. Are you still making Sky Toss stuff over here? Yeah, additional Phoenix, okay. Interesting, very, very interesting here from DNS. All right, well, let's see what these guys can do for us. Let's see what Brown can do for you. Revelation, toss down by a baby or possibly the other oracle i don't know i don't know which one it was a third base coming up from dns too wow he knows that clem is playing on his back foot right now he's playing extremely defensively he doesn't really want to move out but you have to right did you see has versus kelizer on my sunday series if you like pbt and you missed that you really shouldn't miss that it was an incredible series and in a situation where Akelazer really should have just been looking to defend the whole time, he found a way to sneak a drop out and really did a lot of damage on the other side of the map. So Clem, I kind of feel like needs to, but this Phoenix Ball makes it hard for drops to get out, is the thing. I don't know where they could go where the Phoenix wouldn't find them at this stage, so Clem is really kind of forced to stay put. I like this play from DNS. I really, really do. I mean, if you could lift missile turrets... It'd be a problem. He's just threatening with these air units, is all he's doing. Some stalkers pushing on back home. Natural, or third base by DNS up. Additional gateways here, too. What else is he making? That's about it. He's working on zealot legs, which I just think zealot legs are one of the best upgrades in the game. Really gives zealots a lot more utility than they otherwise would have. Some stasis wards getting tossed down kind of all over the place. A little bit. By a baby. This one's a baby, because that one has the kills. Yes, it is. Good job, uh, baby. Hey, they were right. Throwing down, what is it? Uh, uh, dumping stasis wards everywhere, I believe is how that, how that was explained. Anyway, pretty big army here from Clem. I like the marine count. I like the tank count. I like the cyclone count here, too. No major complaints. Ooh, with that, medevac. Oh, Widowmine fire. Double Widowmine fire there. Takes out how many Phoenix? Two Phoenix go down. Somehow the oracles avoid most of that damage, and Clem says it's time to go. I know I'm being revealed. It's really annoying. But I think it's time to push out. Does he? What does he know about? Nothing. He doesn't know where anything is from DNS. Good stasis catching a cyclone and a marine. Trying to pick off some of these reinforcing units with his faster, faster units. Ooh, getting that medevac would have been good, but they don't even try for it this time. This one's better. Huh, huh. Where that widow? The double widow mine. Where'd they go? There's one. Mm, tried to kill it. We're forced to drop it instead. And just making more and more Phoenix. This reminds me of like Phoenix Adept days back when that was a PBT thing, but not anymore. And he's not making Adepts anyway. It's not a big deal. But I'm prone. But I'm prone. He is making a robotics facility. Some immortals would be pretty good in this situation. Again, no splash damage. <laughs> from DNS here. We are seeing maybe a meta shift into no splash for Protoss against Terran. I don't know how it's working. I just... Well, Marine overextends there. Some hits off on the Stargate, which I think DNS is done with anyway, and if he's not, it doesn't matter. Flying over, trying to, again, reinforcing units here. SCV down, taking a missile turret hit, and then backing off. This is the most, like... Careful harassment I've ever seen from a Protoss player. He's absolutely not willing to risk anything to kill stuff. If he can kill stuff without risking it, then he's fine. Another revelation thrown down on these units. It is 147 to 147 supply, which is good for Clem, except that he's down 20 workers, 66 to 46. 
Three basing Protoss is nothing to sneeze at. Charge lots are here. They do have plus one armor. Tank getting picked up. Can the Phoenix finish it off? No. Instead, going after the Widow Mines. Really worried about those Widow Mines as compared to the tanks. There are still a lot of Widow Mines on the ground, though. There are still eight of them. And the Marines do have plus one, plus one. Third base attempting to happen here for Clem. Clem pushing up the ramp. And where are we? Where are we at? Stasis Ward catches a couple of the uh, a Widow Mine and a couple of Marines. Is he going for this? Wow, he's kind of going for this. Well, Diaz, I mean, was until he threw up all those force fields and then said, never mind, I don't want to engage. And didn't. Phoenix always sounded like bumblebees to me. It sounded like bumblebees to you. Another good stasis ward there, catching a marine. So not a good stasis ward, but good job by Clem. Recognizing the threat of stasis ward everywhere here, which is kind of hilarious. A scan and says, all right. There we go. Guardian shield is up. We got the zealots on top of everybody else here. Taking some widow mine shots. A lot of the zealots are actually gone. Guardian shield is up. That's a lot of bio here, though, from Clem. Picking off zealots. Picking off more zealots. A colossus is out. He needed this colossus so very, very bad. And here we go. Doesn't have extended thermal lands. And not actually researching that either, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Widow mine's getting picked off. Handful of marines. And Marauders remaining here for Clem. He's going to try to take down that third base of DNS. And look at Widow Mine! Hits! Taking out a sentry. What a fantastic hit that one was. Colossus and Zealots chasing this army away. It's very hard to kill Zealots when they have plus two armor. It takes a lot of attacks to do it. And it's an exercise in kiting unlike you've ever had. Phoenix getting picked off in the sky there. And finally, Clem's forced to just retreat. He's out. He says, all right, a couple of my medvacs are severely injured. Some reinforcing units are trying to do some stuff here too. Try to blink over and catch those medivacs, but no. The flight path was a little bit too safe there. Finally, extended thermal lands on the way. We are three base to three base, 49 to 66. Clem is down in workers. Oh, Oracle Revelation. I think he could have won that actually. I really do against that number of Marines. The wood mines weren't burrowed. Here comes the drop from Clem. You had to know this was coming, DNS. Unloading his Marauders, burrowing his Widowmine on in here. There is a shield battery, but they can't really heal through this much damage, as it turns out. Now it's time to lift. Ugh, lift and get out. Another engagement in the middle of the map here. Two DNS chasing a Terran army away there. Widowmine's got some shots off. Not really enough to hurt DNS all that much, as it turns out. 136 to 112 total supply. DNS is up both up in army and in worker count right now, which is never where you want to be. As a Terran player, that said, mules are good. Mules are good, but it's still 2,400 to 1,900 minerals per minute in favor of our Protoss player. Is this a baby? <gasps> it is a baby. You're still alive, a baby. Oh, this third base doesn't have any static defense. Get it! There was a window there to get some worker kills. I hope you are aware. Fourth base coming in for DNS at the 13-minute mark. These guys are trying to make something happen. I mean, I guess... At some point, oracles just become revelation machines, but look at how juicy these SEVs are. Look how delicious and ripe they are for that oracle to destroy them. Do they have armor? They have plus one armor. I don't think it matters all that much. Honestly, not with oracle DPS. So weird, weird setup here. We got Archon, we got Colossus with extended thermal lance, plus one attack, plus two armor on them. And some stalkers. It's not a huge army from DNS, but again, nothing huge here from Clem either. Both players have been throwing their attacks back back and forth going for it now nah, liberator enough to shove the protoss player away 9,000 resources lost for dns 11,700 for clem another drop attempting to move on out meanwhile the remaining units here really aren't that many and i think dns could just kill them all if he wanted yeah liberator down widow mine down sometimes you just gotta go sometimes you're afraid but it doesn't matter dropping inside the main base gonna deny that plus three armor is DNS. Excellent job there. Going after the Nexus. Some of these pylons trying to depower the stuff. So the warp gates can't warp in reinforcements. But there is a big old zealot attack into the main base of Clem here. There's another attack of the Protoss into the front door of Clem. So it's a bit of a base race type scenario at this point in time. Natural base is toast. Main base is toast. SEV count is plummeting a lot. There are some defending units here for Clem. He's trying to kite these zealots as best as he terranly can, but the rest of the Protoss army is still here. The ter Terran army for Clem is just terrifying right now. We are base racing this thing, ladies and gents. The recall at the third base. He gets it. 
He gets the recall, and suddenly the Terran army is in a lot of trouble. Still, enough units remaining, and there we go. Clem with the GG. DNS left some of his units back at the Terran base just to kill units that tried to come out and help. And it was enough, man. Five kills on that Archon, four kills on that Archon. These SCVs are running for their lives. Third base is toast. Natural base is toast. And there's nothing happening in the main either for Clem. So he, uh, he did his best. He went for the base race. They say never base race at Terran, but that recall was clutch. Super clutch. Back here at the third base by DNS. Excellent job by the old guard taking out the new guard there. 20 kills on that Colossus. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So 14,400 resources lost by DNS. 18,200 by Clem. And it was kind of a weird game. It really was. That really interesting Phoenix Oracle play by DNS that kept Clem at home for a while there. The early pressure that did pretty well for DNS too. And then Clem's drops didn't do a lot of damage, at least until kind of the doom drop there that started the base race. But again, that wasn't enough. There was still a base mining for DNS. I mean, the fourth base would have gone down, but the third base was alive and that was more than Clem was running with. So he tapped out. All right, that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.